सो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ पॉपुलर ओपन सोर्स लाइब्ररी कॉल्ड एज ओपन टेलीमेट्री and specifically i am going to focus on metrics so in monitoring world observability world uh, you might have come across logs traces metrics uh, these are called as signals of observability or the data types of observability uh, in that i am going to focus on metrics i'll talk about what metrics are most of us drive two wheelers four wheelers bicycles right it has a speedometer which shows us the speed of the car or a vehicle at any point of time we see the mileage we see certain other statistics about how our driving is going on those are nothing but metrics they are basically statistical information about any activity that you are doing like if you are wearing an apple watch shows you your health statistics like what is your heart rate how many hours you have slept today uh, don't sleep now please like those are the metrics those are the statistics about any activity that you are doing similarly for any application or any um, component there are metrics as well like for a HTTP API metrics are availability, latency, throughput. Uh, for a software, uh, sorry, for a component like RDS or uh, database, uh, CPU can be one of the metric. Memory can be one of the metric. Now the question is, how do we use those metrics? How do we collect those metrics? How do we see those metrics? How can we get alerted on those metrics? That's the story of how we can uh, use and uh, get benefited from those metrics. And I'm going to talk about that today. So why you should care, right? Uh, we discussed about uh, some aspect of it earlier. Monitoring is important from the uh, angle of understanding the system health, and especially open telemetry because it's a new open source standard. Uh, the standard allows you to uh, work with multiple observability tools, multiple monitoring tools. Uh, it allows you to have standardization in your telemetry so that even if your language has changed, even if your frameworks change. your instrumentation doesn't have to change your uh, the way you monitor your code doesn't have to change so that's why uh, this is an important topic and most of us are writing code so this may be of interest to you uh, in the metrics uh, ecosystem there are two giants like prometheus is one of the tool that people use for monitoring so that's one of the monitoring tool then open telemetry is another way of doing metrics so i'll talk about some differences between uh, both of them i uh, will talk about a component called as open telemetry collector uh, which is a centralized component for processing the data transferring it to multiple destinations of our choice i will talk about certain capabilities that open telemetry has around standardization which is all about semantic conventions like how can i have a uh, certain core relations between logs metrics and traces using these uh, conventions uh, some compatibility conversion uh, issues between prometheus data open telemetry data and we will end with uh, how the ecosystem is today what is happening in the open source ecosystem from an innovation perspective uh, what the road map looks like for both open telemetry and prometheus Uh, with respect to metrics why you should care open telemetry is getting a lot of attention these days uh, if you are a person who is doing sre devops work or is interested in doing that work uh, knowing about open telemetry might help you uh, in your journey as an engineer as well uh, if you are an application um, programmer or a software writer uh, then also knowing about open telemetry might help you because somewhere along the line you will be asked the question that oh, the code that you have written and shipped does it actually work like what is the proof right uh, professional world is different from a uh, like a hobby projects there you are scrutinized for the code that you write and something like this will help you vendor neutrality uh, one of the biggest selling point of open telemetry uh, if you use lot of tools like datadog new relic you might have come across their own protocol their own ways of generating data own ways of alerting and dashboarding open telemetry tries to solve that obviously uh, in the metrics world there is uh, native support being added uh, in prometheus for open telemetry uh, so we'll we'll talk about that as well uh, if you think about the metrics part specifically like i was talking with mani earlier about uh, what is the compatibility matrix for uh, each of these signals so if you see metrics except ruby and perhaps rust all the other languages are either stable or experimental so popular languages like python go have good support for metrics uh, for logs and traces also uh, the support exists uh, but varying degree depending on the language uh, let's talk about prometheus uh, i'll give a brief uh, introduction to the prometheus architecture and how it monitors the applications so you have a prometheus server in the middle uh, there are applications these can be http applications backend applications they basically emit metrics so this is slightly different from new relics or datadogs of the world where you have an agent it pushes those uh, telemetry data to a central uh, storage system here applications emit metrics and then there is a prometheus uh, server which scrapes those metrics from different uh, applications and components 
and then it either keeps it with itself or uh, pushes to a long term storage so it's based on a pool based model and this pool based model plays a very important role uh, in our talk because open telemetry supports both pool and push so how does prometheus now support both traditionally it has been supporting pool based model uh, but now the industry has been moving towards push so uh, i'll talk about uh, how it supports uh, both of those models so this is the typical architecture uh, that you will see with prometheus one important thing to remember here is that data that is reported to prometheus is in cumulatives so for timestamp 1 i observed that the value was 1 for a particular uh, instrument at time timestamp 2 the value was 4 because the value increased by 3 so the delta was 3 but what went to prometheus was 4 so prometheus collects cumulative values so 1 4 7 9 is what will will be stored in prometheus 2 3 whatever the delta is is ignored like we we get cumulative value the whole calculation visualization alerting of how you do uh, uh, that you do with prometheus is based on cumulative calculation as of now so the delta calculation doesn't like the support for delta calculation or temporality doesn't exist today and uh, we'll talk about that uh, in the later parts of the talk uh, some of the interesting things about prometheus it's, it's a very simple text format so there is no binary protocol or a, a protobuf that you need to start emitting metrics with prometheus it's a simple text exposition format uh, there is a new standard recently uh, established as well which is open metrics uh, the values are float these numbers are like every uh, instrument gets a float value uh it's a very uh, simple uh, complicated to implement but simple to understand a multi dimensional label based data model and earlier we had discussed about the pool based script model so it works on pool based model whereas open telemetry is different now what is open telemetry right it's a collection of apis sdks and then client libraries and certain tools that you can use open telemetry with you can use open telemetry to collect data from application server components multiple services web services background jobs and so on so you can collect that data pre process it run it through certain filtering and then export it to a destination which is your data storage backend one of the important factor to uh, remember here is that open telemetry doesn't have its own backend but when we saw prometheus in the earlier slide prometheus was able to store data with itself as well so it is a storage tool as well along with a monitoring tool so it's a storage tool alerting tool monitoring tool whereas open telemetry is only about uh, open telemetry is also uh, only about collecting the data pre processing it and then sending it to somewhere doesn't care where it sends to and that's why the promise of uh, vendor neutrality comes in because open telemetry doesn't care where you are storing the data as long as that destination is hotel compatible so as long as the destination understands hotel protocol you can have datadog new relic any new uh, like levitate any new uh, software as well which can store that data semantic convention signal correlation with logs matrix traces and so on specifically it also tries to um, remove some of the performance bottlenecks that existing systems has Uh, it has some design goals that are uh, specifically towards uh, making sure that the performance of collection of data pre processing and then exporting it uh, is up to a uh, expected uh, level now if you think about the components of open telemetry standard specifications a separate area then sdk is client library specific to sep- uh, specific languages ruby python golang and all of that and then some middleware tools which you can use with kubernetes or other deployment uh, mechanisms where you can deploy those tools to pre process the data send it to a destination this is like a high level uh, component overview of what open telemetry is in terms of the tools there are two specific tools which are of interest one is of course the hotel collector which allows you to collect the data process it and export it and the second is hotel operator if you are using kubernetes uh, across any cloud um, you might have come across this kubernetes operator concept which allows you to scrape data or work with multiple kubernetes services deployments together so there is a hotel operator as well which basically standardizes collection of data from different targets and then send it to uh, a storage backend as we discussed earlier there is no storage backend with open telemetry right it's just a collection of data pre processing and then dispatch so it can work with multiple backends now with respect to metrics there were certain project goals uh, when open telemetry decided to support metrics there are certain goals uh, that they wanted to uh, fulfill one was obviously to connect metrics to traces and logs uh, the other was uh, there was a old library called as open census which was already there 
and uh, hotel wanted to give a migration path to open census users so that they can switch to open telemetry and then working with existing protocols like prometheus where people can switch between two uh, tools and then can leverage existing tooling that they already have uh, without uh, learning completely something which is completely new so that is the design goal we'll come back to the tools and we'll focus on the hotel collector uh, as a primary component uh, for rest of the talk because uh, that plays a very uh, pivotal role in the whole uh, ecosystem so this is a like a hotel collector diagram what it does is there are three layers sorry there are receivers processors and exporters so there are three uh, three components to this receivers processors and exporters receivers is where you collect the data or receive the data this can be via different protocols processors is where you can redact the data you can filter it you can transform it into new signals and then export is where you can export it to multiple destinations now if you see a typical application architecture you can push data in otlp format which is the open telemetry protocol in which you can generate the telemetry data hotel collector can also collect metrics which we saw earlier like prometheus supports that slash metrics pull based model so hotel collector can also receive data using prometheus protocol so that is one of the important point because which means that hotel collector by design already supports collecting data from your existing telemetry pipelines for metrics and then you can remote write like that is the traditional way remote write is nothing but like sending data to a third party destination you can remote write to a prometheus compatible system or a prometheus can scrape it as well from an exporter so multiple ways to push that data out recently there has been a, a feature or capability added where from the collector you can also push it to a otlp format to prometheus this is a very recent feature uh, it's not i don't think it is uh, it is still experimental i think but what that allows you to do is it allows you to have same native otlp format at end to end because on the left side also you can push metrics in otlp format and on the right side also you can push them out to a destination in otlp format so end to end you can work in a native otlp format uh, with this approach let's talk about each of those components receivers exporters and processors uh, in detail so receiver there are primary two types uh, prometheus scrape and the otlp push uh, the scraper is very similar to prometheus those who use prometheus might find this familiar uh, it's a, like a yaml configuration for service discovery relabel configs and so on this works as it is in otl as well so you just have to copy your existing prometheus configuration put it under the otlp yaml file it will work so the scrape model works as it is using this you will be able to scrape metrics from your existing components using otl collector now what is the advantage right why should you use otl collector in this case because now using that same otl collector you will also be able to collect traces and logs from other services and then combine them together push it to the destination right this is one way of uh, getting the data uh, the otlp push is very similar there are sdks you can push it to collector so i have not included that in this slide uh, this is my favorite component of the collector processors because what this allows me to do is allows me to batch certain payloads together so that i can do optimizations like i don't have to wait for each and every sample of metric to be sent individually i can batch them i can put some memory limits depending on my application uh, I can re do redaction as well. So if my application is having some PII information, custom metrics, usernames, their emails, passwords, I can redact them at the collector level before forwarding it to the storage destination. And of course, I can mangle with attributes. I can create new attributes, new labels. So it allows me to do uh, pre-processing for uh, all of these use cases. Uh, let's say I have use case where I am getting pod usage and the CPU limit as two individual metrics. I can create a new metric out of it, which is about how much is the pod utilization. And this simple calculation, while it looks okay, the advantage of doing it at the processor layer is your query time is now getting reduced massively because otherwise you would do that while you are querying the data. Here it is happening already before you send that data out to the storage layer. You can extract certain things, you can apply regexes, you can create new labels by picking certain fields from your uh, metric data before pushing it forward. So the transformation layer uh, or that operation is also possible uh, when it comes to exporters again there are multiple ways uh, that we saw earlier uh, there is a scrape matrix where your prometheus compatible storage can pull it uh, from the exporter uh, there is a remote write option as well where you can just push it to a remote write and then experimental otlp push support which was uh, recently added in prometheus now because open telemetry doesn't have a storage backend those metrics have to be sent somewhere and that's where prometheus again comes back into the picture because that's the ideal source for storing those metrics because there is a whole ecosystem of grafana alerting 
that is already built for metrics, which is based on the Prometheus ecosystem. So Prometheus is an ideal candidate for storing OTLP metrics. And that's why the next part of the talk will focus on how we can send OTLP metrics to Prometheus and what are some of the uh, issues or what are some of the challenges there. There are a few challenges. One is of course that OTLP was its own open source project. Prometheus was its own open source project. Uh, they have different APIs, different types of metrics. They are not same. So that is the biggest problem. Somebody has to do the conversion uh, before those metrics can be stored in Prometheus. Uh, we discussed about the cumulative nature of how data is collected. OTLP supports delta temporality as well. So it can collect the differences between two timestamps. Uh, there are pros and cons of both the approaches. But if somebody is using delta temporality at the instrumentation layer, now Prometheus has to understand that and support that as well. Otherwise, uh, it won't be able to accept that data. Out of order metrics, we saw the example of a batch processor. OTLP doesn't care about what is the order of metrics, uh, what is the order of timestamps in which the samples are generated. Prometheus expects that everything comes into a standard T1, T2, T3, T1, T2 in an incremental order. So that is also a problem. So there are some issues and um, uh, with respect to the metric types, uh, OTEL has different types for histogram, sub-down counter, async counters. Prometheus is more traditional. It has only few types, gauge, counter, summary, histogram. So the collector, processor that we saw, they do the transformation where, where OTEL metrics are converted into Prometheus uh, metrics as of now. Uh, with respect to temporality, delta temporality is something that OTLP supports. Right now, Prometheus doesn't support it. So if you're instrumenting your metrics, Using delta temporality, Prometheus just drops it. It doesn't store them. Only if you're using cumulative, then only it will be able to store them. Uh, but there is a feature uh, request that is out there. Uh, and in, in the next major release of Prometheus, they're adding support for uh, delta temporality as well. Naming conventions is another challenge. Um, OTLP uses dots. Uh, dots are considered bad for metric names and uh, label names in Prometheus. So again, somebody has to do that conversion. Uh, Prometheus is working on adding UTF support, UTF-8 support where dots will uh, will become a default, uh, but that will come into the uh, next version. So right now the conversion happens at the processor layer that we saw earlier. So overall, uh, what is the state of the art today is um, there is an API specification for metrics. There are SDKs for certain languages. The API spec is GA, generally available, uh, which means that uh, the, anyone who wants to build a library implementing that spec, they can implement it because the spec already exists. Uh, we saw certain metrics for the SDKs, certain languages have already support uh, for the API spec, certain languages are in experimental stage. Uh, collector allows us to do the pre-processing uh, dispatch and so on. Uh, and then push versus pull mechan mechanism, like OTLP supports both. Uh, push as well as pull. Uh, with respect to supporting open telemetry natively in Prometheus, these are the challenges that Prometheus team is looking to solve. Out of order support for uh, out of order data that will come from OTLP. Uh, UTF support for uh, the dots and other uh, naming conventions. Delta for the uh, like how the data is collected. Uh, and then there are some other things, performance improvements and all of that. So Prometheus is planning a major 3.0 release um, in this year, I think by Q2. Uh, and in that, they're planning to have some of these features included where Pro Prometheus will support open telemetry uh, natively. What we discussed was, um, of course, uh, why should you care about this? Uh, some of the differences between Prometheus and OTEL, uh, semantic conventions, uh, issues with conversion between OTEL metrics and Prometheus. What is the state today and where the roadmap is going? That's mostly it. Uh, any questions?